The Telecom Department panel released its net neutrality report. The panel wants to regulate domestic calls offered by apps like WhatsApp, Viber and others, but it wants the government to adopt a liberal approach towards international calls and messages. The panel also wants to allow zero rating services on a case-by-case -case basis. To discuss the net neutrality report, we're now joined by Rajiv Chandrasekhar. He's been vociferous in his opposition to the TRAI consultation paper. Of course, also the former CEO of BPL Mobile and an independent member of the Rajya Sabha. Rajiv, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. You have said that you will challenge the DOT's net neutrality report in Parliament. What is the biggest flaw that you find in the report? And do you think that this report is at all an improvement over the TRAI consultation paper which you were against? No, uh, if you remember, the whole uh, brouhaha of net neutrality started because of the perceived bias in the whole TREI's approach towards net neutrality. Net neutrality is basically a, a very fundamental issue to do with protecting consumer rights, internet consumer rights, and the free and fair open nature of the internet. This document is classic bureaucraties because it, while it talks about the core principles of uh, net neutrality, and I don't know where they got this new phraseology of core principles of net neutrality. Uh, it also says that there is no need to hard code the definition of net neutrality. Uh, at the very least, what the government is expected to do is to create a hard coding and a definition of the exceptions to the net neutrality, the rules of the game that the telcos have to, have to follow. Okay, so you're saying that the government hasn't defined net neutrality. What is it that you would have liked them to hard code into the principles, Rajiv? No, Shireen, I, I think the government's job, and we must understand this very clearly, the government's job is not to lay out principles or ideologies or, you know, guiding principles. The government's job is to lay down specific rules that then become the rules of the game that have to be followed by the telcos and those become the rights of the consumers. This is not about general talking. That is what you and I do in a TV channel. But the government has an administrative duty to lay out the rules in specific, non-vague, non-ambiguous terms, which become, therefore, the rules for, that have to be followed by the telecom companies and the access providers. Okay, so let me ask you about specifics now because the DOT panel's argument is that domestic voice calls offered by OTT players like Viber, etc. should be regulated as they lead to a revenue loss for telecom companies which in turn will hurt network expansion plans and defeat the very purpose of broadband for all, etc. Do you buy that argument? Not at all, not at all and, and my problem is not about me buying it or somebody else buying it. The problem is that the DOT is accepting as a bland assertion by the telcos what they are saying. The DOT should have, in this report, if they were accepting that, presented evidence and facts that stack up against the erosion, this claim of erosion of revenues. By the way, this is an argument that is used by every monopoly or every market dominant player to prevent innovation and prevent creativity and cre prevent competition, which is, I will not be able to make investments, my revenues are going to erode, so therefore put a halt or put some barriers and burdens on other innovators. I get that, Rajiv, but the panel has given some data in terms of the difference in yield, for instance, when you make a regular call and when you make an internet call. And they say that the difference in the yield is actually significant. How would you respond then to that? No, 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 no. no the, look, I mean, you know, I have dealt with so many government reports. They have a habit of stacking data and statistics that are completely irrelevant. The issue that is of relevance here is the claim that this is eroding the ability of telecom companies to invest in infrastructure, there is absolutely no evidence to that. And the DOT has erred, this committee has erred by accepting as a bland fact, without challenging, without data, without any proof, that assertion by the telecom companies. And that I have a serious problem with. Because if you remember, the TRAI, the entire outcry towards the TRAI was this so-called perceived bias. And the DOT committee is supposed to come in there and make this a lot more dispassionate and a lot more fact-based. And I think there they have unfortunately failed.
Okay. Uh, what about zero rating then, Rajiv? Because the panel report says allow zero rating on a case-by-case -case basis. Would you say that that also is a cop-out? Yeah, it is because it is ridiculous because in other parts of the report, they say we do not want discriminated uh, access to the Internet. And zero rating is just that. And to say that we, will, we want these guiding principles of net neutrality in Annex 4 and then go out in the same breath and say the TREI will look at each zero rating on a case-by-case -case basis, either is to believe that people are not going to read the full report or some parts are going to read Annex 4 and some parts are going to read the other parts, is, I mean, it's bizarre. It, it is really uh, it's an insult to the intelligence of a lot of people who are following this debate. They could have done a far better, uh, uh, you know, approach towards the whole concept of net neutrality. I understand that there is a challenge to balance the interests of telcos and the free, fair, open internet and the consumer rights. But the DOT should have done, in my opinion, a far more fact-based, far more transparent, far more qualitative and quantitative approach towards this, rather than say, we believe in these ideologies and philosophies as if they are philosophers. They are not. They are a government ministry and they should be administering based on data and facts. You know, if you look at what they've done, Rajiv, it seems that the panel has tried to strike a middle path, but in doing so, it's actually confused matters even further. So it's, it's trying to protect telecom companies. It's also trying to protect the over-the-top players. And in that, perhaps the consumer has been lost. I agree with you, Shireen, that, that this is an attempt to create a middle path. And unfortunately, in this kind of regulation and policy making, there is no middle path. There is a right way and there is a wrong way. The moment you start playing over smart and try and create a compromise, you go down the wrong way. So that's my word on that. And I have been in this sector for long enough to know the middle paths always lead to more chaos and confusion than just doing the right thing. Chaos, more chaos on the and issue confusion. Of what in the fact government should do, Shireen. Yeah, l let, me, let me ask you this, uh, Rajiv, because uh, Derek O'Brien was on the show yesterday and in his interview to me, he said that two bogeys must be buried. One is the bogey of national security and the other is the bogey of bleeding telecom companies. Would you agree with him? No, no, I agree with you, Shireen. And I, I think these are bogeys because and that is the mistake that this committee has made. By just raising these bogeys without backing it up with facts and data, you are just pandering, you are again giving the perception of pandering to some lobby or the other. And that is exactly what the DOT committee was not supposed to do. This is what the TRA fell prey to, and the DOT committee was supposed to be a departure from that, and they have failed miserably in addressing the perception of capture by uh, businesses. And so on, uh, but going to the other question about what the government should do, Sheen, I believe that the minister is right. This is not a decision of the government. This is a decision, this is a recommendation by a committee of the uh, Department of Telecom, which has had a seriously flawed track record anyway on uh, policy making. The government of India today has a, f a problem, legal problem, that the TRAI is already seized of this matter and is in the middle of a consultation. I think the minister must send a direction to the TRAI to expedite and complete their consultation. And then the government must intervene and say, this is what our, the government of India's decision is after reviewing the TRAI's uh, recommendation and this committee's recommendation. The government of India, he, the minister is correct, the government of India has not taken a decision yet and cannot take a decision till the TRAI finishes this consultation process. Well, it looks uh, like, Rajiv, that the telecom minister is already trying to distance himself from this report. And the TRAI, you were talking about expediting the report or the, the recommendations of the TRAI. The TRAI today is headless and continues to be so. So we don't know how soon we will actually hear from the regulator. But appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. And as you said, you will challenge this report in Parliament when it reconvenes on the 21st. So